What is up YouTube, it's your boy Greasy, and today we're going to be going over how to play Ella here in Rainbow Six Siege for your guide. And we're going to start off on the screen right now, kind of go over again some like the other videos. We want to go over kind of loadouts and just kind of preference of how you're going to play. Because um, with Ella, she really does have two great guns to choose from. Uh, it just kind of depends also maybe what platform if you're on PC. Either gun can actually be still very viable. A lot of people will maybe lean more towards the Scorpion just because it does have that 40 magazine, the 40 capacity higher fire rate. And on PC, it's actually a relatively easy gun to control compared to like on console. Like this gun isn't nearly as bad as trying maybe like Twitch's gun now since they've nerfed it a couple times or even Buck's gun, especially because they've buffed now the recoil in the first few bullets. On console, it's gotten better since they, um, since released, because when she first released, it was a laser, easy gun to use. This gun was virtually no recoil, it had like 50 bullets. Uh, like 30 damage or something like that so it was roughly the like the best gun in the game at that point so they gave it a few nerfs it became almost unusable on console unless you had just incredible recoil control or maybe you could do three bursts like it has and then kind of three burst it i've heard people say uh, but now it's gotten a little bit more viable a lot of people still use her shock on the full 12 on console but it really can be preference i go back and forth being how i play uh, like if i'm trying to be maybe a more anchor type player maybe not quite as far from a software maybe like a rumor way or maybe on a staircase nexus site i'm going to bring this because this gun is incredible especially on console and i'm on xbox shotguns are the strongest guns you're going to play against no matter which one what you're doing so i would say bring shotgun more if not on console if you want to because even if you're going to roam off i use it as like an ambush roam i'll save one of my gadgets one of her um grismont mines they're called that way I'm off roaming, I'll have one in pocket so I can put it in if I hear maybe someone entering or if I think they're pushing that side, I'll put it up so I can try and ambush them and shoot with it. But it kind of goes back and forth as well. Since they did change the recoil, I like to use the barrel attachment of extended barrel so you get a little more range and then use the laser because it does condense the spread of the pellets on the shotgun. Especially since they've like reworked how penetration is and how all that works with the different guns. This really can help you out so you get a more consistent feel with shotguns also. So I would suggest using that, but if you don't like it, you don't have to use it. But it does help make it feel more consistent because shotguns already weren't the most consistent thing in this game. But when they changed the penetration mechanic in the game, this I definitely think has helped make it so it is still more consistent for when you're getting kills. And then sight's kind of just your preference because on shotguns, I really don't use the sight that much. I'm never really aimed on sights. It's always really a hit fire. But also it comes down to your preference. And then Scorpion, it also is preference as well. I like the Flash Hider on PC. I go back and forth from vertical to angled grip though. Depending on how I'm feeling, if I want to be more aggressive as a roamer, I'll put angled on so I get faster ADS time. Um, but again, it just comes down to your preference there. You can run around and T-Hunt, test it out, or just play some games and see which way you like it the most. But I'm going to stick with this to go over the video for you so we can kind of go over different strats of how I would play maybe if you're going to anchor more with her or even if you're just going to be a roamer with more ambush style play. Now we've loaded in here for you on the most common site up here on the radar room and server room. This is the most common two sites you're going to play on this map and it's definitely not the greatest map. Most people don't like this map but I'm going to kind of go over how it's set up just maybe can help you out. So in the next rank game if you get on canal you have maybe a better chance or more of an advantage to try and win when you're playing. Uh, so when I start over here, you'll be a common spot. I like to play as L, especially on this map, is on these staircases. So maybe a lot of people know if you've watched the game long enough, if you're back in the day on like year one with King George as a pro, this is like the most well-known spot of King George playing with shotgun on these sort of staircases. Because you just sit up here and you can stop the pillbox hall if you need to, and then you can cover the staircases. Like you throw you one of your Grismonts up here, and then you'll know when they go to push. You can swing if you need to or you can sit back on an off angle and wait for them to come up to you so it really depends on how you want to play but I like to throw my Grismonts these, these little things that go up on a wall and they can stick almost anywhere you throw them I like to put them on staircases next to site if I need to so like see I'll put one right there um, or I'll put one over here almost all the time I'm going to put one over here though unless you have like a lesion or we put a bunch of barbed wire on this staircase so we can kind of help make it kind of out of sight, out of mind type situation. But then you'll know if someone's coming up with having a Grismont there or just a lot of barbed wire. Um, but if I'm going to be playing over on red stairs, I'm probably going to throw one on that staircase or just put all my barbed wire over there. 
And that way we can kind of have it out of sight of mind. And I'll put one over here so we know if they're going to push Skybridge just to help my team a little bit more. And then I like to think about when you're placing your Grismont Mines when you throw these, to put them in places that your team can take advantage of but aren't going to put your team at a disadvantage as well. So like on like site walls, like say up here on the site wall, I wouldn't really put one on a site door because if late round maybe you have someone that's in here trying to watch that doorway with their SMG and they're waiting because you heard someone call out the red stairs or on the, that 90, the elbow hall, and they're trying to hold this angle for the guy to come in, but he's coming from red stairs and has to swing in. And say your guy maybe misses his initial shot or there's a ping difference and he may be just a little delayed, he lags out. And then he enters in through that doorway, sets off the Grishmont mine. Now your guy on your, your team is going to be flashed and concussed just like the player that's coming in. So both players are going to have a rough time. So it's I don't like putting them really anywhere that's on site that could maybe affect my team. Um, so it's kind of a practice you want to think about as well. I like to put them maybe on spots like right here on this doorway. Could be a spot that way if they're trying to push in. Your team will know. So you have maybe someone that's playing closer up here. And then they can swing. Or if you were down here, like I would be, I'd play usually down here on this red staircase. I'll put it there. And like say, I know that no one's down here. We've cleared it. Maybe they already got their buck that was trying to come in. So I hear him pushing up. I'll throw up in that corner. Then I'm going to sit down below this staircase. So as soon as it goes off, I can push up and try and get the kill. Uh, but it kind of depends on how you're going to play it still. I really wouldn't recommend that one either. It's not great. Because it isn't the easiest one to take advantage of. Because he might come through and go, or come through and go, oh shit, and back up. So he still can be protected. So I like to put him in places where it's a lot harder for them to try and get cover once they've experienced it. So putting one like maybe right here, that way at this point, they're at a point of no return. Because even if they come through and they set it off, they still have a lot of area to try and get back and get out of the way of. So maybe even they just did, they push over here. You probably have someone either playing back here next to the control panel. And all they can do is maybe have like a Valkyrie or something they can just throw over a C4 or their, and then that's going to be an easy kill. But also having it there is going to help this person to know. So they can stay back here tucked. And then as soon as they hear go off, peek. And then they have an easy kill. So you want to put it in places that your team can take advantage of. And also make it so it's an easier kill in a lot of ways for your team as well. So I like to put one right there. And cover it up. Maybe put a piece of barbed wire. That way they aren't going to really expect there's something else there that can stop them. So they can hit the barbed wire. Your team's going to know already. And then all they have to do is wait for the person to push. Set the Grisma off. And you're going to be good. Um, but it was also kind of going to keep in mind that it isn't going to be like it used to if you played maybe two seasons ago before they nerfed the Grismonts, where they did affect mouse sensitivity. So before you'd come through and that would set off, instead of being able to move like this, your guy would probably be moving more like this, even if you're trying to move like that. Your sensitivity gets was cut tremendously down. So you'd be going from moving like be able to look from doorway to angle, doorway to corner. You'd be moving more like this at that same distance you're moving your mouse before. It would really cut that down. Now that that's been nerfed, it doesn't. So you're going to have the same sensitivity. So that's also, also something you want to keep in mind. It's not quite the same advantage as it was, but it's still going to distort their vision. It's going to give them that concussive effect. They can't hear anything. So you want to think about how that is now since it's nice they buffed or nerfed, I guess you should say, the LO Grismonts and the Zofia ones. But that's a good place to put them over there so you can make sure you can stop where teams are pushing. It's just another way, kind of like with the Legion one I went over, it helps you to make sure you can help either deny a team an area or just make it so it's harder for them to push and slow them down. And so when you're doing that, you want to make sure you put them there. And then as a roamer, I'll always leave one in my pockets. Like, say maybe I had one over here and then I put one over there. We had someone that put down barbed wire and red stairs. That way we can watch. And then I would push off to go roam so I can try and slow a team down. Because a lot of times teams, when they're pushing that site, they may try to either push down white stairs so they can come down and try and move around the map. Or they're going to try coming through main stairs and push over here so they can get underneath the site. So I usually, when I'm Ella, I'm either going to try and ambush them over here with putting maybe a Grisma up here against this doorway or in between them so I can get either one and then I can sit back over here and I'll watch cam to see where they're pushing so say they took out this camera and this camera I know there's people spawning over here and people spawning over here 
So if they do that, I'm going to sit here and wait. I'll watch. I'll put my Grismon up. But if they don't take out that camera, or maybe after about 15 seconds, I don't hear somebody hit one of these doorways or this window, I'm going to take off. So at that point, I'm going to maybe push over here. Because the majority of the time, they're going to have someone more than likely trying to push underneath here so they can get like a Buck or Ash, maybe Zofia underneath, to either try and get your bandits off the wall or just create some like movement from your team from underneath. So I like to play underneath here as well. I might sit over in an off angle, like maybe back in this corner on this filing cabinet and watch this doorway. I'll probably put a Grisma up here above this one so that way I can kind of protect my back as well. And then I'll sit and watch this doorway or I'll sit over in this corner and kind of watch this doorway so I can see if they're going to push down underneath here or if they try to push in from over there. That way you can try and help ambush, again, the players with your shotgun. And that way you can try and slow them down. So it depends on how you're going to play. You want to think about it. A lot of maps can have the same setup. You can play underneath because there are a lot of verticality on a lot of maps. Just think about how you're going to push and think about how you would push the map as well. So. If you were trying to attack the server and radar room, where would you push? What angle would you try to be coming through? Or maybe if you were playing Buck, if you play Buck, where would you want to try and enter the map from to get underneath? Or where would you be trying to push the map? So from there, you can try and do the opposite. So say maybe you're that player that likes to push up from over on white stairs or maybe come through the Coast Guard room or the radio room over there. Maybe try and go play over there for a minute. So don't roam off too much, kind of like Vigil. You don't want to roam for terribly long. But if you're going to roam, you want to roam off and make sure you can try and delay the team or get some kills and make it so your team's at more of an advantage. So you want to think about angles you can hold that will be better for you to hold. Like maybe you hear this window getting opened up. Maybe play an off angle in the doorway. So as soon as they come in, you'll be able to swing and get the kill or put them in a corner where they can't do much either. So think about how you're going to play it, and if you're with your other gun, it'd even be more helpful because then you can have the SMG, you can get some angles. Um, but I like to ambush, play with this gun, spends in my day. If I feel like my shot's really on, I'll probably bring the Scorpion. Other days, I'm going to bring the Fo 12, and then I can just sit here and protect anybody trying to go underneath. Because that way, if they do try to push underneath, I have a shotgun, I can run it out. It's got one of the highest fires of any shotgun in the game. It's not terribly high recoil either, which is nice. So you can mow people down with this gun. You get 11 shots. So it's definitely a great gun to use. Probably the strongest shotgun of the game, but besides maybe the sausage, I believe. Um, but kind of think about how you're going to play it, where you would push, how your team would want to take the map, and go from there. So if you have any of the maybe maps you want me to go over to help you out with as well, maybe some more other setups, maybe angles I can help you out with on Ella, because if you shoot certain angles open, like say you're up here, I would open up this for my team that way if I have somebody that is like a bandit or my kaid playing in box they have the angle to watch as well so that way even if they maybe someone wasn't playing over here they hit that grismont mind or maybe put it up here so that way if they get closer your guy can watch by setting up angles for you as well so think about how you can play your map think about how you'd be pushing the map where you'd want to push from and then when you roam off it's the same idea you just want to try and slow that team down from pushing that area or getting to site. But if you have any of the spots you maybe throw or different areas you would throw your charisma mines, you have a certain special spot you feel is stronger than others, let me know down in the comments below. And we'll keep it the next time. Keep it easy. Keep it breezy. It's your boy Greasy.